How American Horror Story Cult Handled Election Night 2016 in its first seven minutes spoilers ahead for the premiere of American Horror Story Cult. In July, Vulture's Mark Harris wrote a piece proclaiming that the next few months would usher in a new period for pop culture in the age of President Donald J. Trump. The next wave of Trump era art will probably be about the world we're in, not about the world too few of us saw coming, he wrote. The new season of American Horror Story, cult, particularly the deliberate, political terror depicted in its first seven minutes, may serve as the most obvious marker of that new wave of storytelling, which doesn't address Trumpian times by slyly slipping in through a subtextual back door, but barrels straight through the front entrance, while loudly screaming its of-the-moment intentions. In the case of Oz, cult, it also does this while showing us a dude humping a television broadcasting Fox News. The horror genre tends to place a lot of weight on its beginnings, which are often designed not only to jolt but to establish the foundation for everything that comes later, tonally as well as plot-wise. The extended pursuit of Drew Barrymore at the start of screen confirms that the mysterious killer could strike anyone at any time, but more importantly, that the film will make a sport of meta acknowledging its genre's tropes. The camera that wins its way through a suburban home at the start of 1978's Halloween turns out to actually be capturing the pop of a very young, already homicidal Michael Myers, making it clear that this troubled soul may have reason to eventually revisit the same house on that particular holiday. Previous seasons of American Horror Story have often adopted a similar approach, teasing out the dark history behind its settings, like season one's Murder House, Briarcliff Manor in Asylum, or the New Orleans of Coben, in the earliest minutes of its first seasons. As I said in my review, Oz cult gets to its point right away with a politically charged beginning that features actual, spine-chilling footage from the recent presidential campaign trail. I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody, and I wouldn't lose any voters, okay? Then segues into the series' first sequence of genuine terror, Election Night 2016. The toggling between aggressive November 8 celebration, as represented by Kai, Evan Peters, shouting USA, as the election is called in Trump's favor, and the profound, distressed shock expressed by Sarah Paulson's left-leaning ally, Merrick Garland, she cries. What's going to happen to Merrick Garland? Is a moment that simultaneously depicts a world too few of us saw coming and the world we're in now. Even though Oz cult may briefly veer away from politics in subsequent scenes, at least on a surface level, the opener very clearly establishes the election as the show's inciting incident and constant trigger for allies' psychological shakiness and Kai's apparent pursuit of misguided power. As written by series co-creators Ryan Murphy and Brad Felchick and directed by Bradley Buecher, these seven minutes in Electoral College held toy with tropes as much as Scream does, but within the very specific framework of 2016-2017 America. When Trump walks on stage to make his acceptance speech in the wee hours, we hear the ominous synthothoms typically reserved for the horror movie moment, when the psycho killer suddenly appears. The stereotypical freeze frame on the terrified potential female victim manifests itself via a close-up of Ally, with a single tear running down her face, and a sad little I voted sticker still affixed to her sweater. When Kai walks to the bedroom where his sister, Winter, Billy Lord, a Clinton supporter, is grappling with grief and frustration, we track that path from his pod, the same way John Carpenter lets us follow Myers to his sister's room in Halloween. Even a throwaway line like the one that comes out of the city councilman's mouth, I hope every one of those voters who decided it was a good time to cast a protest vote is happy when that psycho gets us all killed, has an air of horror movie foreshadowing about it, especially given what happens to that character by the time episode one is over. That protest vote comment is more or less the equivalent of saying I'll be right back in a slasher flick.